going to talk about something that's relative, relative to me at the minute, but will also be relative to you, that you may not have looked at before. My work availability, because I'm looking at a couple of months contract in the UK just to bump my money back up. Um, West Midlands, there's nothing currently going on. There's work in London, there's work in Yorkshire. Um, now, agencies, well, my agency, um, they will look and most of them do, at your physical location. Now, I'm down as West Midlands because my parents are based in Worcester. So when they look for work, they're only looking for the radius of that. In my work, uh, you can normally find that once you're associated with certain companies, they understand where your flexibilities are, your costs, etc. Because of the way things have been undercutting people recently, the accommodation, hotel, etc. used to all be covered, but a lot of it is not at the minute uh, because people have been fighting over making money and one of the easiest ones to cut off is accommodation because it saved a company about £150 a day. So that has pretty much damaged my flexibility um, for being outside of the West Midlands. Now, when you talk to these agencies, and I've talked to 10, they will go... We've got nothing in your area. But the reason you contact them is you want their names. Uh, you want the people that are direct. Don't just assume because you've sent your CV over to them, that's the end of it. And I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you something now. So these guys have turned around and go, right, there's no work, Yorkshire, uh, West Mids. We've got something in London, we've got something in Yorkshire, but we've got nothing for this guy. Just push him in, you know, to one side. Uh, you'll find loads of people available on CB, I think it's CB Library. CB Library, and I use LinkedIn a lot. Um, but I'm in the FM industry, so these are more relevant to me, but CB Library is relevant to you. When they look through, they're going to see you're, you're in the wrong area. Now, what I did once I was rejected by... All of these, it's not the fact that they actually don't want to work with me, it's quite simply I'm in the wrong area. Is I sent a response to all of them because once I got contact with them, um, I then call them up, I then email them, I pester them a little bit. And then they're going, yeah, but Matt, there's nothing in the area. And it's like, well, how much are you paying? How much are you paying? And once I've got the day rates, I can work out how we're going to work this out. So you've got day rates for what I do that come in bottom end at 190, top end about 300. Now at 300, you normally find that accommodation is a bit hit and miss because they're trying to get you near where you are, where the work is. So they're paying more because you're actually costing them less. Because like I said, it's 150 a day in hotel and food. So if you can find people in London, for example, on 300 a day, then you've got no costs of their commuting, etc. Or you may have, you pay their train fare or something, local train fare, not driving into, uh, not like Worcester to uh, London, which costs me about 80 to 140 pounds a day. So that's the high end and that's the low end. Now, what you find is if you turn around and go, well, I'm not, that's a bit low. But I'll actually go and work in London if you'll increase the rate and I'll sort the accommodation. That ticks a box for a five out of ten. Just say five of these guys. But then the ones at the high end, they want 300 a day. You say it as well and maybe even contact some of the guys direct. That ticks the box for them as well. So bearing in mind, for the last week, I've been talking to these people, phoning them up, and they're going, we've got some work here, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's not starting now. What they mean is that area is now full, but they're now in an area that I don't operate in. So I basically get taken off the list. So what I do is I put myself back on the list by finding out what flexibility is in the contracts. And you can do that with if you've got specific skills. But also, if there's a... A shortage of skills um, for example when they were building some of the stuff for the the new Heathrow terminal for example that was dragging in people from all over the place and they were paying a phenomenal rate because they know 
accommodation that's expensive so they make it easier for you to do it and they'll pay you more money to do it but when you start getting it where you know they're going to struggle to find people in London and uh, but you say I'll sort my own accommodation instantly they're interested because they know they ain't going to fill all these vacancies because there's hardly anybody that does this in London not to the level we do anyway now where do you get the cheap accommodation uh, look for things online like homestay and uh, LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn uh, Airbnb I found accommodation on homestay this morning for 30 pounds a night in London that's not expensive you're being paid 300 pounds a day I don't mind paying 30 pounds a night on top of that 30 pounds a night I can actually put that through as an expense so it's not cost me anything because it'll come off my tax anyway uh, Airbnb similar thing rummage around there is also things like uh, backpacking uh, search for the backpacking hostels and stuff um, student accommodation Student accommodation is a bit of a nightmare, I know. <laughs> but at the same time, you will find if your work's coming up to like now where there may actually be a holiday period, the reason it's cheap rent is all those buildings are empty. So there's actually an opportunity to move into student accommodation when everybody's gone home. So there's a lot of little opportunities. And the reason I'm putting this out there is because I know some of you guys are looking for work. You've got nothing local and you're thinking, well, how am I going to get out of this? What am I going to do? That's some options for you. Now, I know some of you guys have some specific skills within specific industries. Have a chat with the agencies. I'm talking about call them up and say, look, I don't mind where I work. If I can find cheap accommodation, I will stop over there. What can you do for me? And you may find they'll go, well, I don't know. Or they'll go, oh, can you? Oh, funny enough, we just had a job come in where they want somebody in East London for doing X, Y, Z. And you can go on this homestay and pick up somewhere for £30 a night. And you can turn around and say some... I'll give you some of these jobs. Quote basic pay of about, say, 26000 per year. Depending on what it is. Uh, generally, I work on the short contracts because it pays way more. Um, one of these type jobs, somebody posted on my um, blog before, oh, you only earn this, this is how much. No, no, no. That is the person who works there full time. As a contractor, I was actually earning 76000 Why? Because every hour is bookable. Every commute hour, every work hour, everything was bookable that's why I do some of these jobs so don't just assume that because it's advertised at 26 that's the only amount you can get uh, but also if you're just doing contracting it's always higher always you should be able to make a good living on this but it's worth looking around and comparing what actually is in demand or not because I know some of you have worked for government services before have a shop round on these websites, um, the agency ones, and see if you've got the skill sets, but a different title. Um, let's 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 put what I do. I'm a building surveyor. I'm a, a property surveyor. I'm a fabric surveyor. I'm a mechanical and electrical surveyor. I am a facilities manager. I'm an engineering manager. I fall under even carpenter electrician, join, well, joiner, all these different titles, I can do all of them. But a lot of them are the same anyway. A facilities manager is just somebody who manages buildings. And if you've been a supervisor somewhere, you've probably only got the skills to do that anyway. You may need to polish up the, uh, the spiel, the, the speech, um, because there's a lot more fluff and nonsense in being a facilities manager than dealing with engineers where you just go, it's broke, get it fixed. It's, oh, um, we're looking at the budget restraints currently and we'll have to put it forward for next year or if another budget becomes available, blah, blah. You can see what I mean. You can, <laughs> different people, different versions of the same thing. Um, but I just wanted to put this out there because I know some of you guys actually want work and are struggling to find it. 
this might be the easiest way for you is actually move yourself to other areas um short term even you know if you don't want to do it permanently nothing wrong with it i've been doing it for a decade or more it is actually more since 1990 97 1997 i've been contracting um and this is the easiest way of doing it is you just move to where the work is don't assume everything's going to come to you a lot of the uk is sucked dry london is down here it's near three quarters of the money is in london as such it draws all the work to it and you need to go and get it all right thanks for watching